like a pretend Rodney. Yes, my whole life is just a pretend Rodney. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> so, uh, I I have to say, um, a number of times that we've done shows together, I've learned so much. But uh, a number of people have asked me to do something with you that I have not done with you. Mm-hmm. And that's to have an audience of one with you in which it's just you and I discussing yep. uh, gaslighting. So uh, how does a person break free from abusive narcissists when gaslighting is involved? Um, so when there's gaslighting involved, it's like a complete denial of your reality. So it's a matter of addressing that your reality is being shaped by someone else. Someone else is dictating your reality for you. And that makes you start to question yourself. It makes you disconnect from your own sense of self and you lose who you are, what you want, um, whatever your goals are in order to align with the uncomfortable feelings that this person induces for you. So the uncomfortable feelings would be I'm going to be abandoned or this person doesn't like me or they're going to say things about me that aren't true. So what we do is we try to rapidly control the situation, take control by either explaining ourselves or um, just doing what they want us to do, like fawning over them and saying even though they're denying our reality, We're accepting that as truth, even though we know it's not truth, for example. And then over time, you become a shell of who you once were. um, And you, you basically have someone have dictating full authority over your life. And when you're in the position of being a child of a narcissistic parent, for example, when you go out into the world Uh, And you start telling them things about your life in the outside world, like, oh, I just got a new job. Mm -hmm. Um, They might say things like, well, I don't know if you should be doing that job or like, you know, that's not what I wanted for you. And so you start to question yourself. You go, oh, what, what am I doing wrong? I must be doing something wrong if my parent doesn't like it or if this person that I really care about, who I look up to, whose opinion really matters to me. Um, is now saying what I'm doing is wrong, well, then I'm definitely going to question myself. I'm going to start going, yeah, they've told me I was wrong my whole life. And how would I ever be able to make these decisions for myself without their help? And then we start to spiral into this sense that it does come up as like an attachment dysfunction. Um, We become anxious and we start to fawn over them or we will feel avoidant and we'll run away. Um, or we will feel a sense of abandonment Mm. um, and we'll start to freeze or people please, um, you know, all of those kinds of things that really actually um, don't benefit us in the end. They leave us feeling more uncertain, um, more used, more burnt out, whatever Mm. it may be, still questioning ourselves. Um, But in the end, it's just a series of tactics that they're using to make you feel that way. And if you don't have a strong sense of self, it's going to have a strong effect on you. And the strong sense of self, it's not going to be something that just comes overnight. How would a person know whether they have developed that or their caregivers help them have a strong sense of self? So when we're growing up, and we're starting to form a sense of self. Um, there's a there's an, actually an experiment. It's a really good example um, of how we form attachment, and it's called the strange situation, where um, scientists were conducting an experiment to see um, if we could observe children's attachment styles by putting them in a strange situation. So, the parent and the child would be in a room. The child would be playing with toys and the parent would be instructed to walk out of the room. Um, Then a stranger would come in, um, play with the child for a little while. Then the stranger would leave and then the parent would come back in. Hmm. So for those three situations, the, the scientists would be observing the child. And if the child was freaking out when the parent left, 
um, this would, you know, this would be um, a, a sign that they have an anxious style of attachment. Um, or if the child just acts indifferently, it might mean that they have like a, a dysregulated style of attachment where they're kind of like they're used to not having a parent there. Or if they're, um, if they if they act strangely when a stranger comes in, so mm -hmm. like there's all these different scenarios that they're looking at. Yeah. Um, so early on, we're starting to develop a sense of self based on what cues our parent gives us. So if in daily life we're going, "Hey, parent, I need you to pay attention to me," mm -hmm. um, and they're not able to pay attention, mm -hmm. we get dysregulated, and then we start to form this connection in our mind that like, oh, "Okay, this person isn't aware of me in there." So in their space, in their environment. Mm, yeah. So this means that I am not there mm. in some way. And that's that in a way like forms our sense of self that I need to be really, really out there to get attention. For example, if the parent's not giving us any cues or if they're neglectful mm. and they might start acting out. And what do they get told when they start acting out? You're a naughty child. Yeah. You're this yeah. or that. Right. You're ungrateful. And mm. so what does that add to their sense of self, that they're a naughty child, that they're this, that they're that? So it all starts from the way our parents react to our needs early on. And if our needs are not met, what happens? We start to form a sense of self based around how our needs are met. So if the parent's overbearing, in, in an opposite, like if they're not neglectful, they're mm. overbearing, you start to feel like I can't make any of my own decisions because I'm scared. Like yeah. it, it becomes like that. So you don't have a sense of self. You think you need someone else to make all your decisions for you. So it can go one of many ways. But we look if we look at the way our parents reacted to our cues, they might have been overreactive. They might have been underreactive. They might have been indifferent. They might have been, you know, not there at all. They might have mm. been there too much. They might have been hovering over us. Um, that's what forms our sense of self. We respond in, to the environment. And so coming back to the question, was it, was it what so forms our sense of self or what? Yeah, actually, w what forms that for us? It's not like we can get one overnight, right? No. So if you have um, dysregula dis a dysregulated sense of self from childhood mm -hmm. and you're coming into adulthood and you're trying to figure out how am I going to gain a sense of self now because I've either been so hell-bent on everyone else's opinion of me mm -hmm. that I couldn't make my own decisions or I was so independent in the world because no one was there for me um, and I feel like I have this strong sense of self and like, you know, independent and, and no one can like penetrate this wall of whatever, you know, vulnerability or whatever that may be, you know, so mm, we might not right, be able right. to create relationships. Right. Um, we have to look at what do we want? And sometimes we may have not ever asked that question. Like, what do I want? And for people who have never been able to make those decisions for themselves and they start making those decisions it feels quite daring it feels quite strange mm -hmm. it's like oh am I going to go out and start making my own decisions when my parent keeps telling me I'm wrong and we feel like this daredevil it's going out there and like you know <laughs> yeah and and they're, they're telling us that we're wrong for doing it and all these feelings come up like oh I'm not good enough or or this is really affecting my family or the person in my life in a, in a bad way but if they're reacting to us trying to create a sense of self in a negative way, yeah. they're reacting in a way that pulls us back from what we're trying to do. It means that they were benefiting from how we were in the first place. They were better benefiting from our lack of boundaries or they were benefiting from having authority over us and telling us everything that we should do in our lives. Mm. So when you start taking control back of your own life, Take a note. Take notice of what's in your environment. Are the people happy for you? Or are they are they hating it? Are they trying to drag you back into their little ring of control or power? So real. So really, the the person in order to have a sense of self has to recognize who is supporting them in trying to have that, and not trying to hold them back because maybe they're trying to hold them back simply because 
they want to have that measure of influence or control over us. That was good. That was good, Sarah. That was good. A thousand percent good. I was um, 